All right, shalom again, brothers and sisters. Uh, let there be light. Uh, whoa. All right, my brothers and sisters. Um, I I, I was uh, informed that I got a couple of only about maybe about six or so minutes in this. So we're gonna just focus this part. We're still speaking about redeeming the time, 2012 and beyond. How do we prepare? How do we prepare? What is our contingency or or continuity? Let's speak about the continuity of Rastafari through this 2012 period. That's what we're speaking about essentially here. And from some of our studies and, and checking out different information and, and, and verifying and verifying certain things, it is quite um, amazing what we see. You know, we're saying through the Word and being guided by the Holy Spirit. And we know that it's important to share this with all the brothers and sisters. So, so this might be the, well, the third or the fourth vid in this, we'll call this a, a continuity of Rastafari, you know, saying, which is really speaking of the continuity of the reign of the King of Kings and I and I hearts and I and I minds and, and bringing us into that kingdom age. You know, saying, but first there is Jacob's trouble, Yaakov's Mekra. There's this a day of great tribulation, you know, in these days that will be like the days of Noah. As he was saying in the last part that one particular brother had asked and said, um, you know, what are ones waiting for? Rastafari waiting for Halasas to return again? I thought it was an interesting question. But in the overstanding with the Holy Spirit showed I and I, it's not that we should be waiting for so-called him to return, but we need to grow up to him in all things. You know, saying, as see, we begin off as his dear children. So when we're born again, we read this particular Ephesians chapter five, and it speaks about um, be therefore followers of God as dear children. We must be followers of the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haila Shalasi, as dear children. Now, there's a particular prophetic word that the King of Kings speaks on. That I think is 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 very well in tune with this time. And I'm going to go to the uh, translation of I and I Publishers forward. Um, actually, the we in Ethiopia speech, I think, would be more um, apropos. So here we go right here, where he says in the last part, His Imperial Majesty, and this is, this is um, right here, right? Um, the Bible, what's known as the Bible speech, right, of His Imperial Majesty. Right, he says um, in the last paragraph today, today, and I'm saying this today, August 2012. Right, today, man sees all his hopes and aspirations crumbling before him. We're seeing this whole civilization unraveling before us, but still, ones are caught up either on nine to five or caught up in whatever way that they're caught up in, you know, and this is why the gospel is so important, you know, because whom the Son has free, whom Yeshua HaMoshiach has free, right, whom the Jesus Christos has free, is free indeed, right, whom the Son has freed is free indeed in spirit and in truth, See, this is the truth, he's black, our black Lord and Savior, Adonai Yeshua Ha Ha Mushiach, Gita Yesus Christos. But let's get into the spirituality. You know, saying to show and prove, right? Prove those things which, as it says right here, it says proving what is acceptable to Adoni was acceptable to the Lord. So we must go to the teaching of His Majesty, where He says, "Today, man sees all his hopes and aspirations crumbling before him. He is perplexed." You understand? Know Ones are perplexed. You understand? Know if you're not perplexed yet, you understand? Know with a couple of more passes of Nibiru, you understand? Know Ones will be really perplexed. You understand? Know so please don't turn a deaf ear to these messages right here. But his message says that man is perplexed and knows not whither he is drifting. You understand? Know I mean, what, what really is going on when you really look around? You understand? Know um, but he must realize. And this is what I and I have recognized and must continually recognize and realize that the Bible, the Metzhaf Kedus, the Metzhaf Kedus is his refuge. Now in the Torah portion, right, and we're in Devarim, we're in the third part of Devarim, 
But when we go to the Torah portion, right, um, the third Torah portion, uh, oh, actually the second Torah portion, you know what I'm saying? Um, it speaks about refuge cities, and throughout the Torah, it speaks about these refuge cities, and we also find them in the other um, books, or the Metzahist, the books that are named Metzahasen, because there are five books named Orit, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we call the Amharic Orit, or the Amharic Torah, you know what I'm saying, or the Ethiopic Torah, right? So, we must recognize the Bible is I and I refuge. You know what I'm saying? Zion, I refuge on the in the spirituality, speaking of our spirituality, and the rallying point for all humanity. This is a beautiful thing that it's like more and more people who had no knowledge of the Bible are beginning, you know what I'm saying, to learn the Bible for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So we should be very upful and positive about that. Yes, some errors they might learn, it depends on what denomination you also know who has brought it to them, but the truth be the truth. Whether Christ is pre preached um, in truth or even in pretense, I and I rejoice and should rejoice because that becomes a common, you know, what I'm saying a common denominator. You also know, for us.